Hello developers, welcome back to my channel. In our previous video, I have talked about the programmatic drag and drop, uh, but we only touched the draggable interface uh, or the API. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the drop uh, action, which is a uh, second part of the drag and drop. Obviously, when you dr uh, drag something, you need to drop it somewhere. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the, the second part. Uh, so by the end of the previous video, we have finished the drag or um, abortion and you can see there is a preview uh, component which is a kind of a reddish uh, background uh, doesn't have the ID in it and uh, you can apply any other CSS or elements to make it more uh, fancy but yeah. So the PDND support a few different types of uh, drop targets but in our uh, tutorial, um, we will only focus on the elements, which is the, um, the I guess, the most common one uh, we use to um, work with the DOM elements. The API is, uh, to be honest, there's some confusion. There can be some confusion if you just read the name of the callback. But uh, I hope after this video, you should have a solid understanding of uh, what's a different callback used for um, and uh, we well so in this video we'll keep using the example we used in the previous video uh, we, if you haven't yet please check it out um, and uh, we will continue with uh, what we left and to begin with we will make this card uh, a drop target uh, so now as we know it's already a draggable um, an element or draggable component um, and in this video we'll, we'll make it um, a drop target so uh, the user can drop another card on top of our target so so the drop operation is pretty similar to the draggable API uh, it's called uh, drop element target for elements uh, as you can see, there's three different types, but we will only focus on the elements for now. Um, and uh, we will import that from the element um, adapter. And um, it, the API is pretty similar. Uh, you will need an element, which is uh, the DOM element. Uh, we will use that in React. We will uh, define the reference and point to that element. Um, and uh, the callbacks we will have a good look at the callback here um, so we firstly we will need a uh, on drag uh, that's the most important one probably and also we will see the on drop uh, these two um, are pretty uh, useful for the uh, drop drop operation uh, console log which is very useful for debugging or you know inspection uh, technique. <laughs> Drag, okay, and drop. And we can see when they will be called and uh, what the um, the outcome is. Um, so in the previous video, we have talked about the cleanup function that the uh, dropable, a uh, draggable returned. And uh, similarly, the drop target for elements returns a cleanup as well. Um, but the problem is like uh, if we have defined like a cleanup here, and we, if we want the use effect to clean up uh, the events handler registered in the drop target and uh, the draggable, we will need a way to kind of. Uh, remember both function and the call it in, a, in a, another function but the um, the author uh, of the pdnd has already uh, covered that for us so we can simply use a function called combine uh, that means you can combine the uh, return value of these two functions one is for the draggable let's copy this over and the other one is the um, the drop target for elements this one um, that means 
a draggable and uh, drop target for elements uh, return value will be combined into one single cleanup so we don't have to manually combine them um, but yeah that's only for the cleanup so just remember to clean up the events uh, event handlers after your uh, component are mounted so now we have reduced both uh, the element as a draggable and the target and the drop target so now let's drag the element from this column in progress column and uh, we will drag it over and uh, put it on top of id1 let's see so you see the drag is, is repeatedly called when I hover my mouse over the ID1 but once I move it out of the boundary you see it's stopped uh, so it's not calling anymore so if I slowly move it back in you see it's being called uh, again and if I move it out it stopped so and if I carefully move this out into myself you see it's being called again and if I move out it stopped so if I move the uh, cursor out of any card and, and if, if I drop here uh, nothing will be called but if I move it inside the any of the um, any of the card and I drop it will the drop will be called and this is where the confusion comes from normally but if you understand the uh, the, the behavior or like a, when the on drag and on drop is called it it suddenly makes sense so at the moment our element which is a card has both draggable and uh, droppable defined or the event handler are defined on top of them so when you move your card here, or like when you uh, we, we drag, it's a drag ball, and when you move the cursor on top of any card, the targeting card is the target, so that will trigger the uh, drag. Like if I move in, and if I move out, it stopped, and if I move in another one, uh, that card is um, drop target on drag is called. Uh, and if I move out, it stopped. And if I move into the ID3, uh, it is being called on the card 3 uh, on drag. And if I move out, it stops. So just to remember that we, we define or bind the event handler to each individual card. Um, so when you read it, it's a little bit confusing, like uh, why it's, it's all called on drop, but they have different meaning. Um, this drop means the card is released uh, whenever you drag it and you release and this drop is when someone else or something else moved into the target and then you, you drop so basically so basically that call in different times so now the immediate question is how can we communicate between the source and target or the drop the the, the one we're dragging and the, the one we got to drop how do we communicate between these two nodes? Um, and uh, the PDND has already provided a great way to do that. So you can get it from the uh, the drag ball first because it, it's always the start of the action. And we drag it, it. You can by the time you start drag, you can pass in some data into the operation. And then in the drop target, you can access that data and then also access the data for the drop target. So then you know the source and target and then you can do something interesting. Like what do you do in, in Trello or in, uh, in a Jira um, board system? So let's start from uh, the draggable part, the source. You can use get initial data um, callback and in here you will, will return the card object that means when you drag the uh, the card information will be attached to the drag operation and on the drop side you can also get data um, the get data will be called uh, repeatedly uh, like whenever you drag you, you, you drag over 
a component or a card, it will uh, we need to we need that um, get the return the card as well. But this card might different from the previous one, even it looks like the same. Uh, but it, it, you just remember that they, they are attaching into different card instance. So for example, if you are dragging the card one, the card is here is the card one. But when you're dropping, when you hover over card three, let's say, this card is card three. Uh, because it's banded at, uh, at the, the compiling time. Uh, that's a feature in JavaScript. It looks pretty, um, um, you know, a little bit twist. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look at the, how it works. So let's say we're written data here. And when we drop, let's say this is, uh, we can access the source, which is the thing you are dragging. Uh, and um, also the self. Self is the thing, the target. So let's say uh, we will uh, access the source of data ID uh, and also the self, which is a target data ID, right? And let's remove this uh, on drag because we don't need it, and we don't need this either. Uh, but we will need to add the card as a dependency uh, in the use effect. Uh, all right, so now like when you drag something, it will get the image data uh, attached to the element. And when you uh, drop, it will uh, get that data from the source um, uh, callback. And then let's see if we can get the source and the self. Self is a target, by the way. And then let's look at the uh, component here. So we are dragging ID1 over to ID2. So ideally, we should say uh, the source is ID1 and the target is ID2, right? So if we drag and in here and then we drop, you see there's ID1 and 2. And if we drag ID2 over to ID4 and the release on there, so if we drag ID2 over to ID4 and the release, you see the ID2 and ID4, that means by dragging over, or we can do the opposite way. We can drag the ID4 over to ID2. We'll get the opposite ID4 uh, and ID2. So with that, we can do something interesting here. Um, so I, I think I have skipped that part, but my board provider has another function called move card. So move card basically will move a card by ID from uh, where it is to the target column in the target position. Uh, if you look at the, um, the position here, it's basically an order of the, uh, the, the card in the column, uh, which is kind of uh, hard coded. But now we in the in the card we can use the um, the move card method, and we can use the ID and the uh, corresponding column ID, and we for the position we will simplify that in this uh, video to make it only. Uh, use the source ID plus one, which is incorrect in most in, in many cases, but let's do that just for simplicity. Um, so now we need to um, firstly get access to the move card from uh, use board API. And, use, and then we can call that move card. Um, we want to move the source dot id which is a source card um, ticket uh, card id to the target column id which is self dot data dot uh, do we have anything about the column column id and the third one is a position uh, target position let's say data dot position we just plus one it's 
most likely incorrect but you will be able to see but it will be correct if we drag the um, the element from here to from the sorry, if we move the ID 4 which is has a position 1 at the end of this to-do list uh, this one has a position 3 so if we move over it will change the column ID into to do and then make it at the end of this uh, list that finished a, a basically a drag and drop let's see if it works now let's move id4 to id3 it works perfect uh, if i refresh the page i guess we i can also move buy some milk over to here and the release uh, yeah it's it works and if we move this one to here as well it works as well and this one uh, yeah the order is I guess definitely incorrect in some cases but yeah you can see um, with this only a few lines of code we have this functionality already and the drag and drop experience just looks great it adds a lot of uh, vibe to our uh, application you can see how easy you can do that operation and uh, just compare like if you have to type it like a context menu or whatever the interaction is i guess the um, the drag and drop way is pretty natural and uh, intuitive for most of the users so yeah that's pretty much about this video so obviously there are some bugs or uh, enhancement we need to look into like how do we um, uh, actually make the order works i think that will be another video um, maybe a little bit longer version to um, to cover and that's all i have for today thanks for watching and uh, i will see you next time bye